finally Andy Stanley confirms what many had suspected and that is that he believes that you can be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ and also be practicing homosexuality and that was made clear in Sunday's sermon on October 1st where he addressed the unconditional conference now many have missed the fact that Andy actually affirms this because he's so good of a communicator and that he has obfuscated it in such a way that I even saw online this morning someone said it's a step in the right direction that Andy said that marriage is is between a man and a woman, which in fact he did. We will get all into that. I have two clear examples where he affirms that you can be a Christ follower and a practicing homosexual. Kudos to Protestia Online, who was uh, in the service and got the audio because Andy Stanley's church at North Point did not broadcast this sermon, though they did say they would make it known to the public soon, so I'm not sure what that means. We're going to jump right in right now, and Andy is addressing Al Mohler's article, though he never mentions him by name, which I'm not sure exactly why, but Al Mohler made an article called The Train is Leaving the Station, and uh, Andy affirms that uh, Al Mohler and him have different Christianity. I want you to hear this from me first before the outside world. Here. So back to the article. I'm um, all are very smart people. So all you have to do is, you know, in 30 seconds you can read between the lines. The author is actually accusing me of departing from his version of biblical Christianity. So I want to go on record and say I have never subscribed to his version of biblical Christianity to begin with. So I'm not leaving anything. And he, if he were here, he would say, well, Andy, I've never subscribed to your version of biblical Christianity. And that's okay. We can agree to disagree. But this is so extraordinarily misleading. In my opinion, just my opinion, his version of biblical Christianity is the problem. His version, this version of biblical Christianity is why people are leaving Christianity unnecessarily. It's the version, it's the version that causes people to resist the Christian faith because they can't find Jesus in the midst of all the other stuff and all the other theology and all the other complexity that gets globbed on to the message. Bottom line, that version of Christianity draws lines. And Jesus drew circles. He drew circles so large and included so many people in his circle that it consistently made religious leaders nervous. And his circle was big enough to include sinners like me. And I come from a long line of sinners like me. What kind of Christianity does Al Mohler hold to? Well, it's called biblical Christianity, but apparently Andy does not subscribe to that based on his own admission for Al Mohler has been abundantly clear on this, that marriage is between a man and a woman, and you cannot be a practicing homosexual, that is to be in a relationship inside or outside of so-called same-sex marriage and be a faithful follower of Christ. Andy admits uh, he doesn't believe that. So that's clarity part number one. If you know Al Mohler, then this is a very clear distinction that Andy is drawing. Now the sermon goes on and we're gonna go now to Andy explaining at the Unconditional Conference He's going to explain why Justin and Brian were there at the conference. Now, for those who don't know, I made a video on the Unconditional Conference. So you can check that out. But also, they are, Justin and Brian are two men who spoke at the conference, and they are married, quote-unquote married, uh, to their partners. And they spoke there, and so now Andy's trying to explain why uh, that was allowed and, and the purpose of their speaking. The presenters, these were presenters the McDonald's knew, this is so important. The presenters they chose were presenters that Greg and Lynn knew from their personal experience would be most helpful for these parents. And they should know because they are one of those parents. 
And this is why Justin and Brian were invited, the two married gay men at the center of all the controversy. And I'm sure that you've read all about that. And here's the thing about Brian and Justin. Their stories and their journeys of growing up in church and maintaining their faith in Christ and their commitment to follow Christ all through their high school and college and singles and all up to the time that they were married. Their story is so powerful for parents of gay, especially kids, that it's a story gay parents of gay kids need to hear. It is virtually impossible, and you know this if you stop to think about it. It is virtually impossible for a straight heterosexual parent to understand what's going on in the heart and mind of their same-sex attracted child when oftentimes their own child can't or won't verbalize it. And these two guys have an incredible way of helping parents understand what's going on in the mind and the heart specifically of their gay kids. They do an incredible job helping Christian parents understand it's because, because they have been where those parents' children are. Now, the other thing that the critics didn't know, and I'm glad they didn't, but it's okay, they're going to now. Um, both, both Brian and Justin had already spoken at our church on separate occasions at the quarterly gathering of Parent Connect. So we had already heard what they were going to say. We already knew how effective they were at um, connecting with parents of, of gay kids in particular. So this wasn't a surprise. This wasn't a guess. This, isn't, this wasn't a, hey, I, I hope this works out. These guys are so excited about what we are doing because they, like you, like me, like compassionate Christians, don't want another generation of LGBTQ plus kids to feel like, hey, who I think I am is incompatible with at least attempting to follow Jesus and it's incompatible with the church because there is a bridge and these guys are bridge builders. There's so much there to unpack, but I'm just going to focus on a quick summary, super quick. Grin and Lynn McDonald are the one who started uh, this or held this conference. And so they invited Justin and Brian. And, and here's the smoking gun that so many have not uh, talked about yet. That is, and I quote, uh, Justin and Brian maintain their faith in Christ and commitment to follow Christ all through their high school, college, and singles, and all up until the time they were married. Their story is so powerful for parents of gay kids to hear, end quote. That is from Andy Stanley. And so in Andy Stanley's mind, you can be a faithful follower of Christ and a practicing homosexual. He literally just said they maintain their faith in Christ. So that's one um, point that I just think is shocking that he, he made it. But he's such a good communicator that it doesn't come across shocking. In fact, when you listen to it, you might not have picked up on it. Uh, maybe you did. But also he adds that they're a bridge builder, right? We don't want to lose this generation. There's a way to keep connect kids connected to the faith by building a bridge into sin, obviously, is what the, he should have said, but he did not. He then goes on to, it's, it's an apology to the people, saying, basically, sorry, our detractors have framed this in such a way, uh, so outside of what we wanted to communicate, clearly, that's true, but so outside of what's true is basically what he's saying. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let Andy say it here, but uh, this is so disingenuous, I just had to... Uh, play this part right here. Based on all how, based on how all of this was presented by our online critics, I understand the confusion. I understand some of the anger that you've experienced toward me. That you felt like somebody's doing something behind your back. I understand the embarrassment some of you had. People were sharing with you what your pastor said. Did you know your pastor said this? You're like, oh my goodness, I've never heard him say that. But here it is in an article written by somebody I don't know. I'm sure it's true. <laughs> Just real quick, he, someone I don't know, Al Moeller, that, that's who he's talk, talking about. And then his communication style, he, he brings levity to it, right? To just kind of sneak that jab in right there that, oh, it must be true. Like, like it can't be true what I've said. 
But that's how we operate in the social media world, right? It must be true because somebody wrote it down. Who is it? I don't know. They, they said they're Jack the Ripper. I don't think they're literally Jack the Ripper, but it must be true. Jack the Ripper online said, anyway. All right, so Al Mohler's Jack the Ripper. Um, I just thought that was just so outrageous from Andy Stanley. Instead of dealing with the substance that he put forward, uh, that is Al Mohler, he just, you know, cast it aside. Classic, uh, classic dismissal of uh, actual issue. Uh, now I want to take you to what I found to be the biggest admission that indeed Andy Stanley affirms that you can follow Christ faithfully and be in a same-sex relationship that is to practice homosexuality. The, the message is the same for everybody. Sex is for married people. Um, and regarding marriage, and this feels weird to even say this, but just make sure everybody knows where we are. We talk about marriage or we talk about and teach about marriage the same way Jesus and the apostles did. Every instruction in the Bible regarding marriage references or assumes a husband and a wife, a man or a woman. So biblical marriage, biblical marriage is between a man and a woman. We've never shied away from that. We don't change the words that we're not to offend people. Now, here biblical marriage is between a man and a woman so in andy's mind as long as he keeps saying that and he believes it which i have no uh, doubt that it's true uh he's okay in affirming uh christian doctrine and belief but in practice andy's getting ready to admit that you don't actually have to live that out to have a relationship with jesus Here's what may surprise all of us straight people. The gay attenders in our churches, they aren't shocked that we talk that way. They aren't shocked by that. They expect that. They grew up on that. They hoped for that. They prayed. They prayed that God would change them so they could experience that. I have sat in groups with small groups of gay men, 35 and up to 65. And watch them weep. Because they, have, they don't have family. They couldn't have family. They prayed for that and God didn't answer their prayer. And many are convinced that traditional marriage is not an option. So they commit to living a chaste life in old-fashioned work. And for many men and men, women who put their faith in Christ, they just decide, okay, I'm just going to buckle down. I'm just going to I'm just gonna bear down. I'm just going to be by myself. I'm not going to have family. I'm going to be sexually pure. And many, 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 many do that for long seasons of time. And some, for some, it's, it's, it's their whole life. But for many, that is not sustainable. And so they choose a same-sex marriage. Not because they're convinced it's biblical. They read the same Bible we do. They chose to marry for the same reason many of us did. Love, companionship, and family. And in the end, as was the case for all of us, this is the important thing I want you to hear me say, it's their decision. Our decision is to decide how we respond to their decision. Our decision as a group of local churches is how are we going to respond to their decision. And we decided 28 years ago, we draw circles, we don't draw lines. We draw big circles. If someone desires to follow Jesus, Regardless of their starting point, regardless of their past, regardless of their current circumstances, our message is come and see and come sit with me. And this is not new. This is who we are. It's who we've always been. And this is why I love our church. And this is why I'm so extraordinarily proud. At 43.14 in that audio clip that I put you in, this is what Andy s said. He said, many men and women who put their faith in, in Christ and then he begins to talk about they live a chaste life and then he says and this is the huge admission that indeed he believes that you can 
be a follower of Christ and also practice homosexuality. He said, but for many others, who others? The ones who have put their faith in Christ. They cannot be chaste. And why? Well, because of family, love, all the same things that, that we want. So it is clear Andy Stanley affirms that you can hold on to Christ and to hold on to what Paul and uh, Jesus and the apostles and the entire corpus of Scripture exclaim cannot be held on to, and that is the lust of the flesh. Now, what's so deceptive about all this, and I hate saying this because, gosh, Andy's a stand-up guy, and he says he sometimes watches these things. So, Andy, I don't mean any maliciousness towards you at all, but you're not off the hook when you say that you believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. Because you literally just said many men and women who put their faith in Christ can be chaste or they can then decide to marry another man. And their faith in Christ is still sustained, uh, according to your view, which is in direct contradiction of historical Christianity, and uh, which Andy affirmed at the beginning of this. Also, when he talks about uh, that's their decision, right? So they might decide to do that. And he, he goes on to say, uh, I don't disagree. I, I disagree with some of their theology, right? But it's then on us and to decide what, what are we going to do? Well, you ought to do what 1 Corinthians 5 says, which is when there was a man caught in sexual immorality, uh, Paul said that you were supposed to put him in church discipline. He said that, don't you know a little leaven, and in that context it's sin, leavens the whole loaf. Now, North Point's already done this. They've already allowed leaven to be in their midst because they allow for quote-unquote gay Christians to uh, serve in their church. So the leaven is there, and now the leavening of the bread is starting to take place further. But 1 Corinthians 5 is clear. You, you do that for those who profess that they are a brother. Now, Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 5, I'm not talking about the world. I, I judge those inside the church, not outside. I'm talking about those who say they follow Jesus and decide to be in a same-sex relationship that is a practicing homosexuality, for those, Paul said, you should not even eat. And I've asked so many people about, if 1 Corinthians 5 doesn't mean what it says, what does it mean? I asked Bob Goff this once because he went on the Jen Hatmaker podcast. And uh, he responded to me on what 1 Corinthians 5 was by blocking me. So I ask again, I ask you, Andy Stanley, if 1 Corinthians 5 doesn't mean what it says, what in the world does it mean? And finally, Andy talks about we draw circles, we don't draw lines. Well, it's one thing to draw circles around people who are working out their salvation, but same-sex marriage is their salvation. Same-sex relationship is is their salvation it appears as andy talks because you hear nothing from andy about fidelity to christ calling this sin not one time this is so important Uh, a lot of people don't realize but if you say you believe something and put forth an argument it's on you to prove that argument is true it's not on someone else to disprove your argument. And so if Andy believes that you can have a same-sex relationship and keep fidelity with Christ, that is salvation, then he has to put forth an argument biblically. Yeah, he knows all the clobber verses. Biblically, how that would work. But that's the problem. He doesn't and he won't because you can't. 
With that, thanks for joining today. Andy Stanley has clearly drawn his line in the sand. He's clearly confused the situation, and in his mind, he's obviously confused so that um, he thinks that just because he affirms that a marriage is between a man and a woman, nonetheless, you can be a practicing homosexual and have faith in Christ. I made another video on North Point and Andy Stanley prior to Sunday's sermon. If you'd like to check that out, click on the card here to my right. Let me know your thoughts. We would love to have your comments. What do you think about Andy Stanley's admission? Please like, share, and subscribe. We would really appreciate it here at Chronicles of Clarity. Have a great week.